Dear chess friends, this is Jiří Dufek on Royal Chess Channel and today we will continue in our mini-series Surprise our Opponent. And because I think that any serious player should include Sicilian defense in any form in their repertoire, then uh, for today's lesson I prepared game Vasher Le Graf Carlsen uh, from London Classic 2019. Let's start. E4, C5, Knight F3, D6, D4, C takes D4, Knight takes D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, which is basic uh, position for Sicilian defense with uh, with D6. And this position, of course, like has a lot of choices. For example, A6, which is Nidorf, Knight C6, which is classical, G6 is a dragon, or E6, which is classical Scheveningen. Uh, there are, well, th these moves are, of course, well known, but Magnus Carlsen prepared very surprising sideline, Bishop D7. And this move has a, a lot of advantages uh, against uh, any white usual setup. Oh, let's start. For example, Bishop E3 now, uh, which is start of classical English English attack, f3, g4, queen d2, and castle. But in this, uh, but in this uh, position, we can play knight g4, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, which is well known, set up from knight or variation 2, but after g5, bishop g3, bishop g7, bishop e2, h5, h4, g takes, rook takes, Knight c6. We see that move bishop d7 is probably more use useful than a6 in the Nidorf. And uh, Nikola Sedlak uh, in game against Nestorovic in uh, Skopje 2012 uh, had very good good game. Another setup is oh well, we started with bishop e3 then f3, which is another way uh, how to play English attack. Now of course. E5, knight b3, bishop e7, bishop e3, bishop castle, queen d2, and now black has to use uh, this this bishop some way, and probably a very good way is to play a5 and after a4, knight a6, with some ideas like knight c5 or knight b4, and rook c, rook c8. And maybe sometimes rook takes c3 with counterplay. And it was played in Stavanger by Magnus Carson against uh, Vishyanand. Uh, and Magnus got a very good, uh, very good position. Another move is classical bishop e2. e5, maybe e3. And now Blake simply used to bishop on d7 and played bishop c6 which is quite unpleasant because there is no normal way how to defend this, uh, this pawn on e4, then bishop g5, and maybe d7, and uh, probably the best way how to continue with white is something like queen d3, bishop e7, and we see that all black pieces place together and black has very good, uh, very good position. Another typical move is g3, a fianchetto line. And now probably the best and safest way for black is to transpose to dragon with something like knight c6, bishop g2, g6. And uh, bishop g7, short castle, or even maybe queen c8, bishop h3 or a5. Uh, with, with counterplay, there is a lot of theory. But I think that g3 set up against dragon is not so much threatening uh, for to, to black uh, and black can choose from a lot of setups. Another very important line is Sozi, bishop c4. But against this, uh, black can use two setups. Firstly, e6, and after bishop b3, with idea to start something like Valerie attack in Sozin. Bishop e3, queen e2, and long castle. 
Now black has a very interesting knight a6 using fact that there is no knight dwarf, there is no a6, and there is no classical. Knight is not on c6. But after short castle, knight c5, we see that this knight is now very well placed and attack not only e4 but even bishop on b3 and uh, Grandmaster Heberla played this as minimum three times and he won uh, all, all games uh, but just uh, only weaker players and another setup after bishop c4 is to play i c6 and after bishop b3 transposed to some strange dragon uh, variation why strange? Because now after f3, with idea of course, bishop e3, queen d2, now black can play knight takes d4, queen takes d4, and bishop g7. And uh, we see that usually on d4 is bishop, uh, but not queen, and now uh, why will force to lose some time? Uh, because after bishop e3, uh, bishop e3, short castle, there is threat g4 and if you will start with bishop e3 then my g4 uh, is very unpleasant move now bishop is attacked and white is forced to lost some time just when we stop now after bishop d7 that means that after any of this move f3 bishop e3 bishop e2 g3 bishop c4 uh, we can try uh, some kind of special setups that white remain with last move bishop g5 this is of course uh, a very strong move and black uh, white wants to transpose to some kind of browser uh, neither system e6 and now queen d2 looks uh, looks natural but in effect it's probably uh, uh, not so good move because after a6 long castle but now black would play nice e6 then uh, game will transpose to Peugeot browser variation uh, where it's a lot of theory but now black is not forced to play nice e6 and he can play h6 which is very uh, very unpleasant surprise for white because now uh, white need to decide what to do with his bishop on g5 and after bishop h4 there is knight takes e4 and after in f4 knight g5 queen g3 bishop e7 f4 and knight c6 using fact that after f takes g a G, this bishop is of course lost. And after knight c6, bishop takes c6, queen g4, it looks like now that black is forced to move his knight to h7 or e4. But now very strong f5. And after queen h5 check, knight f7, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7. Uh, black was simply pawn up uh, in correspondence game Zaharov Dorel. Uh, in 2009 and he won uh, a very nice game that means that after h6 white white can try bishop takes f6 but after queen takes f6 f1 and c6 we just transpose to to browser variation uh, but uh, into sideline which is uh, very good for for black and for example even kasparov won uh, in 2000, uh, in 1985, uh, against Olafsson, in just 24 moves. After knight f3, queen d8, g3, queen c7, bishop h3, on castle f5, king b8, and the weakness on e5, and all black squares. Uh, just this is just very uh, advantages uh, advantages uh, for for black. The last move after h6 is bishop e3, but now black can play knight g4. And after f4, knight takes e3, queen takes e3, bishop e7. We see uh, another, I think, 
slightly problematic position for for black uh, for white because now this bishop is just very strong and you will later find probably nice square on f6 with very big pressure on this diagonal and black is more than okay this is why after e6 the best move by Terry is knight d b5 because now of course this pawn is under attack there is no uh, any other way how to defend it than exchange on b5 bishop takes b5 bishop takes b5 knight c6 queen f3 bishop e7 which looks quite playable for black but of course white has very unpleasant e5 with idea to exchange so after exchange uh, exchange on e5 d takes e5 there is bishop c6 bc queen c6 king f8 and why think that this pawn advantage is more important than this one uh, which is probably true but uh, things are not so simple uh, maxim played short castle queen c8 of course because the king is on f8 then it's a very good idea to try to exchange queens queen f3 now Magnus played rook b8, which is maybe uh, not the best move, maybe make a question bishop on g5 with a6 was uh, was better. But after rook b8, wait, attack of this, this pawn, but I think the, maybe my idea was to activate rook on third rank. And now Maxim played first I think dubious move. He defends his pawn with move rook ab1, which looks uh, very passive. Probably better was b3, and after queen b7, queen e2, with some idea like knight a4 and c4, or maybe even rook ad1 to ignore the threat to rook takes b2. And I think that probably Magnus would choose uh, something like h6, bishop c1, king g8. With idea king h7 of course b3 queen b7 after exchanging queen bishop b2 and probably there why there's slight advantage uh, knight a4 and c4 uh, is probably uh, next plan for, for white but it's not so simple to row to pawns for one then but after rook ab1 magnus played h6 and now Maxim made a very big strategical error. He took on f6. And after this move, uh, black has a very big advantage. It's strange, but it's true. Probably better was bishop c1, which looks strange, to move to bishop to t square and to the rook on b1. But after king g8, king g8 White can continue b3 and after queen b7 just exchange queens and bishop b2 with the same plan like h4 and c4 or he can he could play bishop e3 and after a6 because one was attacked queen e2 king g8 with idea knight d7 and queen c6 but this looks like a quite normal position and uh, it's hard to say that white has uh, any advantage but maxim took on g6 and probably he think he, he thought that black is forced to take with bishop but he must be surprised when magnus took with pawn and now this pawn must is a very big advantage for, for black because these pawns can move forward when the bishop will find very good square on f6 with very big pressure on the queen side and the main problem of white position is that this knight doesn't have any stable square because this line would be very good on d5, but of course this square is 
impossible to reach because there are of course white pawn and there is no any other square uh, which is interested for this knight and that is why after g takes f6 black has very big advantage game continue rook fd1 f5 queen e3 but now magnus miss a very interesting tactic he played bishop c7 but much safer was bishop f6 with queen c7 and e4 but he played queen c7 and now maxim didn't see tactic 2 and he played knight a4 but in this position he could play very strong rook d7 move which is absolutely a surprise that in this on the first side uh, innocent position there is this tactical motive because after the queen takes d7 queen takes e5 with double attack on both rooks and after another surprising move bishop f6 now after queen takes b8 king g7 queen g3 king h7 uh, black lost pawn but probably the best way how to continue with white is to try to force a draw with the queen d3 and after exchanging queens on d3 rook b8 knight a4 rook c8 knight c3 rook b8 with repetition it's a really interesting moment because I don't think that rook d7 is hard to hard to see probably on the diagram uh, everyone is uh, solved this and found this move but over the board it's very hard to see it Maxim played knight a4 but now he is simply worse and Magnus improved his position move by move in g7 b3 queen to ac2 queen e5 bishop f6 there was exchange of c2 and e5 pawn but queen, queen g3 g7 we see that now this knight on the rim is the problem why try to solve the problem to transform to position to to end game with queen d3 but it's of course it's any end game will be very hard for white magnus played rook hc8 but probably even stronger was take the uh, taking pawn on a2 with with the threat rook hd8 and then b3 pawn it's very weak and he will probably fall he played rook hc8 queen d2 rook c7 g3 rook bc8 a3 in g6 and now maxim exchange queens on c2 which looks like uh, only solution but now why there's so many weak pawns f2 is very weak for example after bishop d4 in the future but you'll come very very soon and this pawn will be under attack even these pawns are very weak uh, mainly h3 because there is no way how to defend it after rook a2 b4 was played rook hc4 i c5 bishop d4 we see just a very nice cooperation of black pieces f2 is under attack 93 just defended in time but as i said rook a2 and there is no way how to defend this this pawn because after rook b3 i think that uh, but can continue with something like rook c2 and uh, centralizing uh, king and uh, black will be simply winning maxim played rook bc1 and after exchanging rooks rook takes a3 and we see that 
my own D3 is a very nice piece, but it's not stable. And uh, when this knight will be forced to leave uh, to D3 square, then F2 and B4 pawn, pawns will be very big weakness. And uh, we will lost one of them, or maybe even both of them. Knight F4, King F6, King F1, we look A2. Just, of course, attacking F2 pawns. Knight E2, Bishop B6. With idea to move King forward. F4, stopping the King on F6. But now there is another way how to uh, how to centralize Black King over to d6, d5, up to f3, rook b2, rook c4, king e7, and now rook is pinned to, to defend this pawn, and knight is of course indirectly defending this pawn. On the second rank, h4, king d6, knight c3, we see that now the king cannot continue because all of these squares are controlled by white. But rook f2 check, king t1, rook f3. Now pawn is attacked, and the only way how to defend it is knight e2. And now the king can continue, king d5, rook c8, rook b3. And there is no way. How to defend this pawn? King d2 with some ideas like rook takes b4, probably uh, rook h8. But now, in the white position, is much more important any uh, one other weakness. This is just g3 pawn. King e4, nice e3 check, king f3. And in fact, there is no way how to defend it. Because after rook g8, there is a lot of moves, even I think bishop d4. But bishop f2 uh, will win pawn. And Maxim attacked h6 pawn with rook h6. But he missed simple tactics. Magnus played bishop d4 with, with a bata on c3. And H8. And makes him resign. I think that this is a very interesting idea to play bishop d7. Because black can simply uh, sidestep all the main setups of white uh, based on all of the moves like bishop e3 or bishop c4. All these attacking uh, systems. Even f3 is little bit different than, than usual. And after bishop g5, I think that e6 is very good. And after queen d2, now h6 gives black uh, a very good play. And knight db5 is very playable for, for black. And I think that you should try it in the future because it's very good uh, for black. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.